Degree wheels are your friend. In fact, if you don't know how to use them or understand them, you will never get too far in the world of two-stroke or four-stroke performance. So, let's learn a little bit why they're so important and then we'll put them to good use. Oh, butt cheeks. I had a question about butt cheeks. So the question is, because this is really two words, when I write them, do I push them together or do I spread them apart? Okay, degree wheels. Well, we need to fasten something to the flywheel here so we can watch the piston go up and down and we can check the rotation with it. So we have two different kinds you can use. This would be the old standard thing. Something bigger. This is what I would normally use and this is actually what I will use. I have to drill this hole bigger here. I'm going to have it fit over the crankshaft and then I'm going to uh, put the nut back on it to hold it in place. I do need to get this out though, um, the starter gear, because it's in the way. So to do that, I'm going to have to take the flywheel off. At that point, I'm also going to take this thing off, take this wire out so we can see easier. If you don't want to do that, you could use a little guy like this. Uh, it's smaller. You could drill a hole here. I think you can. I'm going to try it and you would want to use a step bit on your drill. Uh, so if, yeah, if you drill, drill this with a regular drill bit, it's going to catch and this whole thing is just going to shatter. So degree wheel is in place. That's good. I use the bigger one because it's so much easier to see. You need to make a pointer here. This is aluminum welding rod. You can use a coat hanger and you know, something that you can kind of move a little bit that'll stay in place. And then uh, basically what happens is you can, you know, rotate your engine through, make sure nothing moves, everything's relatively good and stout. And then the next video will show you how you uh, start to open the transfer ports and move things through. But I don't want to be redundant here. But when that happens, you know, it's, you're going to get to where they just start to open there. And you want to set your degree wheel to uh, zero because it's just easy to count from zero. And then to get it there, you know, if you have to move it, just loosen this thing up. You can move your degree wheel to where it lines up with the pointer. If you need to move the pointer a little bit, you can do that. And I'm looking right now, I know where things are at. And if you're not really sure, you can always shine a flashlight in it. Let's just count because you'll see at the end, but I want to show you how it works. There's 45 degrees, there's 90 degrees. So not you know, keep in mind, this is 180. So you, even though the numbers are starting to go down again, you're still counting up at this point. So there's 90, 80, so that's plus 10. So that's 100. That's 110. That's 120. And I can already tell you that when we get done with the things, We're right there. We're realistically running 123 degrees of duration on the transfer ports on the Moto race cylinder. So what I do is on the way down, here's your transfers starting to uncover. Just do the same every time. Just as you start the black line crack, there's various ways people like to do it. But just as you see the black line crack, we're going to set the pointer to zero on the degree wheel. At which point I will rotate it through. Back up to where they're just shutting off. And then I see what the degree wheel said. So now that you know how the deal works, I took the exhaust port numbers as well. And you can see the exhaust port was, uh, the valve was closed, so you can easily see what the timing was if you went that way looking for the light and then, and then the top of the port, like the exhaust valve would be wide open. Now on the transfers, uh, they're 123. On the race bike, we saw 113. On the trail bike, mm -hmm. Both quite low numbers, I think. 
but they might have a great shape and some great area and they're still feeling really well. They just seem kind of low in, in duration as far as an RPM based correlation goes. On the exhaust, we have uh, 190 wide open and then 155 shut on the race bike and then 184 and 149 on the trail bike. And that's probably right about there. I think that's really helping to make power with the extra exhaust valve area with the auxiliaries. So I think next video, let's talk more about transfer ports and exhaust ports and cylinder head stuff. And uh, I don't know, let's just take a new a level of learning some stuff. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great night.